since banned the pornographic stuff, saying it violates the rights of the women whose faces were used. But the technology is still out there. You can't put the genie back into the bottle. And is this one more step to making reality, as we know, fuzzier than ever? We're going to get that to, to that issue in a few minutes. But first, Samantha Cole is here with me to talk more about the deep fake story. Welcome to Science Friday. Hi, great to be here. How did you stumble across this phenomenon? Uh, we were made aware of it uh, on Twitter. Someone spotted uh, this person on Reddit uh, going along about his hobby of putting... Uh, celebrities' faces onto porn performers' bodies using AI. Now, I, I was wondering how this, how this works because I saw one example that looks like a cheaper version of the way the 1970s Carrie Fisher was brought back to life at the end of Rogue One. Mm -hmm. how, does, how does this work? Um, well, basically, uh, like you said, it's done using a machine learning algorithm. Um, it takes a data set of lots of pictures of one person's face, um, so hundreds of pictures of, say, uh, Carrie Fisher, and then a video to put that onto. Um, it runs these two together in the algorithm and what comes out after hours or days is what looks like that person in that video. You know, I know it's not that easy because we here at Science Friday try to uh, make a fake video using my face at the office and paste me out to Humphrey Bogart at Casablanca and <laughs> it was not pretty. It's <laughs> harder than we expected, right? So, so how accessible is this? To the, to the average person, right? Right, you're, um, you're right. It's not something that you can just plug into your computer or your iPhone. It's not an app in that way. Um, it comes with tutorials and things like that so that you can follow along and do it yourself. Um, we say that anyone can do it, but it does take um, a lot of patience, some curiosity, and a little bit of knowledge about AI to begin with, um, a huge data set of the person's face, uh, some decent computing hardware, a pretty powerful GPU, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's accessible and it's democratized, but it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy. <laughs> I am, but I know, as I said before, uh, platforms like Reddit are shutting down the pornographic fakes, but that doesn't really stop people from creating fake porn or distributing it in other ways, right? Not, not on Reddit, some other places. No, you're, you're completely correct. It's not going away just because these platforms shut them down. Um, they're just being driven to more scattered places on the web. So Discord, which is a chat platform, has uh, done some work on banning them. A few of the image hosting sites, Pornhub even said that they won't allow it. Um, so they've denounced it, and that's a great step, but yeah. uh, it's not going to disappear from the Internet. If you see a video, and you see that person in the video, and you can say, that happened. And now yeah. maybe that's not the case. Yeah, it's getting fuzzy. Reality is getting fuzzy. <laughs> what else is out there? Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's not just video also. It's, it's also audio. Um, and that can have a really big impact on, as we talked about, diplomacy, where, you know, for example, let's say there's a, um, a hot mic of Trump ordering a missile attack on North Korea. Didn't actually happen. Doesn't mean North Korea won't launch a missile attack back.